Hey there, this is Andrew. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be taking some time to create a menu system that will either work with our simple pointer or our canvas pointer. And we're going to be going over the basics of canvas as well as creating our own simple panel and menu system. This menu system will store a history of the panels that we've been to, and this is especially important on platforms like Oculus Go and Gear VR since it has a designated back button. I don't know about how important it is on Rift or Quest, but it's still very important for providing a good user experience. And typically what I would do for a series like this is already have a menu set up for us, like I did for the simple pointer, but in this video we'll kind of go over a little bit of the canvas itself and why we're setting up the way it is, just for some people that this may be the first time they're developing in Unity or they're relatively new to it, or they have the simple pointer but aren't completely familiar with what canvas is. But to get started, for me I'm going to be using the Oculus package as well as the simple pointer project. You'll need to go through that two part series to create the VR input script as well as the canvas pointer. And if I go to my menu system here, I just have a simple material for my pointer, a prefab for the canvas pointer that we create in the simple pointer series, as well as the canvas pointer script and the VR input script. I also have two scripts for the menu system where we're going to have one that's just menu manager and our panel script. And these will be the two scripts that we're actually going to be writing in this video. At this point, these two should be complete and should already be working. Now I do include a simple canvas for testing that within the simple pointer template, but we're going to be starting from scratch. So let's go ahead and let's create a canvas. If we go to our hierarchy and right click, we can go to UI. And if we want to, we can just select either a button or a text and it'll automatically create a canvas for us. But let's just write canvas. And it's going to give us our event system automatically, which if you've seen the simple pointer series, this should be somewhat familiar to you. And we'll already need to drag our VR input script onto that. And I already have my OVR camera rig into the scene. And I have my canvas pointer child to my right hand. So I'll need to drag that there. And then I'll set my controller to my right touch. And we'll be using our primary index trigger for our click. So let's collapse our camera rig so we have a little bit more space. And let's double click our canvas. And you should see a wireframe here. I currently don't because I need to enable my gizmos. Let's add an image really quick. So what we should see is this simple outline here. And right now our canvas mode is in screen space overlay and we're already getting this warning here that says using a render mode of screen space overlay while VR is enabled will cause the canvas to continue to incur a rendering cost, even though the canvas will not be visible in VR. But not only this, screen space overlay provides a bad user experience. It's usually going to sit right on top of what the user is seeing and can create some motion sickness. But if you want to, you can create a screen space camera if used very sparingly. And what this will let you do is create a little bit of space between the canvas and the camera. And this can be used for some elements, but sometimes you generally want to stay away from this. But can be usable for little pop-ups and things like that. For most user interface elements, what you're going to see is world space canvas. And this is where our canvas is going to behave more like an object in the scene rather than something that's being drawn on top of what the player is seeing. But specifically when we're dealing with our world space or our screen space, we need to make sure that we give it a render camera or an event camera. And we can do that by going back down to our canvas pointer and we'll just drop that in now before we forget. But one thing to note here is if we go back to our image here and then we select our camera rig, we can notice that the size difference is pretty intense. So we're going to need to resize our canvas so it's a little bit more appropriate for our player. So we'll hit our gizmos so we can get that outline. And for simplicity's sake, we'll just make the size of the canvas itself a square. So I'm just going to do 500 by 500. But the big thing you want to do for getting it to the proper size is utilizing the scale. And we can just set that to 0 0.005, 0 0.005, 0 0.005. And obviously that's going to make it pretty small. But what we can do now is go to its X and its Y position. And we'll set both of those to zero. We'll double click it. And then we'll notice it's at the center of our scene now. And we can already see our canvas pointer here. And it's scaled a little bit more appropriately. But what we need to do now is let's raise it up a little bit. And we'll push it in Z space a little bit away from the player. And I think, let's check our game view and see if we can actually see anything. And now we can see that square in relation to our player, and it looks to be a good size. So we can go back to our scene, and now we can create some buttons. So we don't need this image right now, so we'll right click on our canvas, we'll go to UI, and we'll hit button. Double click that, so we can zoom in a little bit more. 
When you're usually working with canvas, you'll want to pay attention to where the anchors are, if it's in the center or if it stretches based on the entire size of the canvas. For world space, since it's usually not going to be reacting to the size of the physical screen or anything like that, we're not going to have to worry about this too much. So that's nice. But what we'll do really quick is we'll just raise this up in the Y position by 30 or we'll do 60. There we go. And then we'll duplicate this button by clicking the button and hitting Control D. And then we'll put this one in negative 60. Now at this point, we should be able to point at these buttons with our canvas pointer and they should react accordingly. However, we do need to set up the basics for our panel system. And that's so we can show different groups of either text or toggle boxes or buttons as different groups. So if we have an options or a chapter selection, when the user hits the chapter button, we want to show all the buttons that are associated. And for options, if we have a toggle box or a button, we want to show all those controls. And we can do that using a nested canvas within a canvas or a canvas group. The good thing about nesting canvases is it's going to manage how often that canvas needs to be redrawn. We won't get too much into that, but it's usually good to have your interface broken up into multiple canvases because it's a little bit better for performance. So what we'll do is we'll go to our canvas and we'll just create an empty object. You'll know that it's sort of added to the canvas correctly because it'll have a rec transform rather than a normal transform. And what we can do here is if we hold Alt and Shift, we'll get the little stretch here and we'll double click that. And if you notice, we have these triangles at the, each of the corners. And we'll just call this panel underscore main. And we'll select both of our buttons and we'll put it in there. And then we'll go to that panel main and we'll add a canvas component as well as a graphic raycaster. And that's so we can actually raycast against objects that are childed to this canvas. Now what we're going to do, and you may already be piecing this together, we'll have multiple of these panels and then to sort of switch between them, we'll just enable and disable the canvases. So if we want to, we'll even duplicate this and maybe we call this panel options and then we'll just change the buttons up a little bit. So we'll just move this one down a little bit more. We'll just make it 120 and we'll just get rid of this one for now. But let's add a simple text here. We'll just center it there. Bum, bum. We'll make it white so it shows up a little bit better. And we'll just call this options. And this is just to let us know that we've switched panels successfully. Now to sort of give you a basic rundown of how this will work is that we'll have our little main panel here. And then if they click the options button, we'll say this is the options button. It'll disable this canvas and it'll enable this canvas. And that's the basics of how it's going to work. We could also, if we wanted to, we can do this a little bit differently and you can have a canvas group. If you then wanted to add transitions for fading the entire canvas in and out, as well as toggling all of the interactable elements on that canvas. So if we had multiple buttons that we didn't want the user to touch while it was fading in or out, we could use this checkbox here. So hopefully that all makes sense. We're not going to be tackling the menu manager script just yet. We're just going to be writing the panel script for right now. But what we can do is select both of these and we'll drop our panel script onto that. And then for right now, we'll just make sure we re-enable our main canvas here and let's open up our panel script. All right, and here we are within the panel script. As I was opening these two scripts up, I realized that we should probably have something that actually does something within this video. So I went ahead and opened up the menu manager script as well. And we'll be writing all of the panel script and then we'll be writing the simple setup function within the menu manager, which it isn't too much. So the first thing that we need to do is create two variables here. One for a reference to our canvas that this panel is attached to, as well as another for our menu manager. So we'll create a canvas, canvas equals null. One thing that I find interesting about the canvas is that you don't need the UI namespace to do it. So I thought that was a little strange. And as I was typing it out, I thought about that I didn't have it in there, but then I remembered why I didn't have it. So we have our canvas and then we need a reference to our menu manager. And this just comes in handy in the future. So then we'll start a private void awake. And then we'll create another function called setup. And this is going to be called by our menu manager. And what the menu manager is going to do is on awake, it's going to get all the panels that are childed to it. 
and it's going to call this setup function. It's going to give it a reference to the menu manager itself, and it's going to enable the default panel. So we'll just create an argument here that we'll call menu manager, and we'll say this menu manager equals menu manager. So the menu manager of this instance is going to be equal to the one we're passing in. And then we're going to need to create two functions, one that we'll call show and another we'll call hide. And these are just going to enable our canvas on and off. And that may seem a little bit overkill to have an entire function for this. But if you wanted to, like I showed you before, have a canvas group that changed the alpha value, you could do that here. And you can do that using something like a coroutine or a plugin like iTween. And then we want to set our hide, we'll, we'll set our enable to false. And like I showed you within the scene before, when we disable the canvas, everything that is attached to this canvas disappears. So it's a simple thing for just hiding everything at once. But once we set up this panel, we want to hide everything. And you'll see why once we get into the menu manager. And before I forget, within a wake, we want to get our canvas. And that's all we need to do here. Get component canvas. And there we go. And that's actually it for our panel. It's pretty simple. Now let's go to our menu manager. And the first thing that we're going to create is a, a public panel. And we're just going to say this is our current panel. And then we're going to create a list of panels. And this is going to be our panel history. And we do want to initialize this to a new list. And I did sort of briefly touch on why we're using a panel history. But the reason that it's important is because it is required by Oculus if you do put your project on the Oculus Store. Whenever the user hits the back button, it needs to go to the previous UI state. And that could be done using a panel history like this. Or if your menu is actually pretty simple, within each panel you can have an extra event or line of code that checks to see if the user hits, hits the back button at that panel, you'll specifically tell it where it needs to go. Obviously that can get a bit out of hand if you have a really big UI and you have to go through there for every little panel and say, hey, if they're here and they hit back, go to this panel. That can be helpful, but it can also be quite a pain. So the panel history does quite a, the, quite a bit of the work for us. Now we're gonna just create two functions for right now. We're gonna create a start function. And then we're going to create a function for setting up our panels. So we'll say set up panels. We'll call it in start. And this is going to be pretty simple. We're going to start with an array of panels. And we're going to say get component in children. Or get components. Because we're going to want to get all the panels. And then we're going to write it for each loop. So we're going to go through each of the panels in our list of panels. So it's going to go through all of them. I actually don't need those curly braces. We just have one line here. And we're going to call that setup function. And if you remember, we need a reference to a menu manager. So we'll just do that using the keyword this, referring to this instance of the menu manager. And then, if you remember, we have that current panel variable up at the top we're going to want to show that one. So what this is going to do, it's going to go through all of the panels, it's going to hide all of them, but it's going to say, hey, which panel do we want to show first to the user? And it's going to be whatever one we put in this public field. Now, because this is a very important variable for my own project, I would probably mark it as private and put serialized field, so it's only visible within the inspector, but only type that out if you know what that means. <laughs> I won't make most people type that out. But I think this looks good for now. In the next video, we're going to be writing out the functions for actually adding to the history and showing panels. So we can actually go back into Unity to do a little bit more setup and then make sure that our setup panels function is working correctly. So let's do that. All right, now that we're back in Unity, let's close out of this little OBR camera rig. And then we'll go to our canvas. And we never put our menu manager instance on here because I didn't think we were going to need to. But we'll go ahead and do that. And like I said before, we have that current panel. And obviously we want the default panel to be this main one. So there we go. 
And I don't have my headset hooked up right this second, but if we hit play, we're just gonna test to see if it's gonna hide that options panel properly. And there we go, as we can see, we have our main panel here, and we can see that Canvas is enabled, and then if we go to our options panel, we'll see that it's disabled. Now let's double check this error down here to make sure it isn't anything important. It's on that Canvas pointer, so let's double check that really quick. And one thing I forgot to do was actually set up the Canvas pointer itself. So if we come here, since we reset up our Canvas, we need to drop our event system as well as our input module into that. Now let's just double check that that fixed our error. So let's hit play. And everything looks like it's working as intended. Nothing's really going to happen just yet since we haven't finished out the menu manager, but double check that your buttons are okay and your simple pointer is working as expected. And that about does it for this video. If you have any questions or problems, feel free to leave them below, and I'll see you in the next one.